with me for the last few months um, behind the scenes and being able to work on a lot of the details that we did uh, making that night just uh, uh, just a blessing to her and so um, I definitely scored some brownie points with that we are going to be leaving actually tomorrow uh, we're going to Hawaii for five nights and six days or something like that yeah and uh, and um, I, I was like, I should have left today, man. <laughs> like if I was smart, I would have left today. Or yesterday, yeah. But, um, you know, I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated to my people. So I says, uh, I'm going to be here today and tonight. And we're going to fly out and be back Saturday so we can be in church. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I was going to st stay longer, but I said, ah, let's just get back. We, we need to. So anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing that uh, tomorrow. And so, you know, if you have any problems or challenges, just see one of these licensed ministers, man. One of these guys, yeah, all these guys, just, they'll help you out. They'll pray for you. Yeah, see Raul. Raul will be there for you. He'll, he'll, he'll leave work and everything for you. Just kidding. But we have a great leadership team that, that, that's here and available for the entire church to be here. Uh, if anything, you know, if you need that. So... Uh, we're going to be having a great time uh, with that. But tonight, I really wanted to dedicate this evening to, uh, to, to leadership. And, and why I wanted to do that was because as we look forward uh, to the future of Victory Outreach Fremont, uh, we know that we are real close to getting this building. And so on Tuesday, actually, we will be working on Tuesday, we're going to be zooming in with our realtor and the architect and a few other people just to kind of tighten up a few things on, uh, on this building. So while we're there, over there in Hawaii, we'll be on a Zoom Tuesday morning. So you can pray for that. Pray for that. Keep that in your prayer so that we can get this thing behind us already. Uh, but uh, that's just one, one piece of the puzzle. Uh, but as I look forward, um, I'm thinking leadership. I'm thinking the leaders that we have in the church, um, uh, you know, we need to, we need to continue to build, build leadership, but then also making room for, 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 for more leaders to be able to come in and, um, you know, know what they're getting themselves into, you know. Uh, church leadership is a lot different from any other leadership in the world, you know. Um, really, it truly is, you know. It's, uh, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy thing. Um, you know, we don't take it lightly here in Victory Outreach Fremont. And those of you who work with me and work close with me and my wife, you know that, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not playtime. You know, um, we expect a lot from our leaders here in Victory Outreach Fremont. Um, we expect a lot of commitment. We expect a lot of dedication. We expect, we expect, we expect, we expect. And we hold people accountable just like we want to be held accountable. You know what I'm saying? And so the same thing I ask of people, I, I, I do my best to model that myself. I would never ask you. I would never, never, never ask you as a leader or a church member to do something that I am not willing to do. Trust me on that. Like, if I were to do that, my words would just fall on the ground. They would not even reach the heart. They would just go out, and they would just hit the ground, and that's, that's not what we're into. We know that lives are at stake, souls are at stake, and every move we make here in the church, you know, is, is no joke, you know. Uh, we can, we can uh, you know, things could fall apart fast. You know what I'm saying? With, with, uh, with just the slightest, slightest uh, mistake sometimes. And so we don't want to do that. We don't want to... We don't want people to uh, experience that. Um, and so, you know, we do our best to do that. Um, tonight, there's a lot of leadership principles I could have taught you this evening. You know, I know we got a, uh, just a whole variety in the room. You know, maybe you're, you're most, well, some of you are leaders, some of you are not. Maybe you've been a leader before, but now you're not. Um, maybe you're new to the church. You're in the home, you know. I became a leader when I was in the home. I really did. Now it's three weeks three weeks in the home and this is funny with me that I always become a leader out of need it's like it's like that's the way God does it with me for some reason like like you know I was in the home uh, there was an empty bed in the staff room and the rumor was who's gonna get it who's gonna get the bed who's gonna be Lupe was my home Lupe and her, her husband were my home directors and it was like man who's gonna who's gonna be who's gonna get that bed man I don't know who's gonna get it and everybody was fighting for it everybody was bucking for it and uh, they gave it to me man gave it to me three weeks in the home and so they moved me in there and uh ooh, so you're a staff now i have no idea they just gave me the bunk man 
Ooh, yeah, then you know, all of a sudden, these guys that were your friends yesterday are no longer your friends today. So I learned that one real quick, you know. The same ones that clap for you are the same ones that crucify you. Come on, somebody. So uh, that happened to me overnight. I gained friends and gained a few friends and lost a lot of friends that day. Um, but it was just an open bunk. I became staff overnight. And uh, just things like that have unfolded for, for me um, in my leadership journey. So um, today I want to speak something, yes, to the leaders in our church. But I want you to also hear this so that you could know um, what season we are in. So again, it's not going to be three ways to lead, five ways, uh, characteristics, and, you know, uh, three, uh, you know, this and that and woes and wees and do's and don'ts tonight. Um, I'm going I'm to give you what the Lord gave me for our church at this time, at this moment, even in, in, the, in the body of Christ, I'll even take it that, that, that far right now, that what, what God is expecting from leaders right now. And, and the moment we're in, that if we, don't, if we don't move like this, and if we don't think like this, and if we don't operate like this, we can very well miss a moment that is uh, happening right now. So if you're taking notes, Numbers chapter 7, I'll read it to you. Numbers chapter 7, verse 1 through 15. And uh, after I read the scripture, I'm going to put my timer on. That's what I do now. I put my timer on. I keep myself to a, to a timely fashion. If you notice that about me, I don't try not to preach that, that long unless I really get fired up or I have some really good coffee or something like that. But I'm going to Hawaii tomorrow, man. So I promise you, I promise you, you'll be crying at this altar in a few minutes. I might even just drop the mic and bounce. I don't know. So don't trip, okay? If you don't see my car out there later on today, just, just talk to one of these wonderful men here and they'll help you out and pray for you, okay? Numbers chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. I'm going to read it to you in the New Living Translation. And the Bible says, One day Moses set up the tabernacle. He anointed it and he set it apart as holy. He also anointed and set apart all its furnishings and the altar with its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, okay? Leaders of Israel, talking about leaders now, okay? The leaders of Fremont, the tribal leaders who had registered the troops came and brought their offerings. Verse three, together they brought six large wagons and 12 oxen. I'll probably talk about that a little bit. Um, and 12 oxen, there was a wagon for every two leaders and an ox for each leader. They presented these to the Lord in front of the tabernacle. Verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Receive their gifts and use these oxen and these wagons for transporting the tabernacle. Very important, okay? Someone say they're transporting the tabernacle. Distribute them among the Levites according, this is important too, to the work of they have to do. In other words, uh, distribute to them these things according to the assignment that they have. We all have an assignment. Someone say we all have an assignment. Lord, bless your word for the next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so as we talk about leadership tonight, um, I think it's safe to say that everywhere we look around today, uh, we see bad leadership, don't we? At least I do. I turn on the TV, I turn on, uh, I open up a book, I uh, scroll through Facebook, whatever it is that we do, you know, it just seems like, man, it's just, it's just horrible sometimes, you know, just the things that we see out there in this world, and maybe even you and your job or your occupation, maybe you're under bad leadership over there, maybe you're, you're exposed to a toxic situation, uh, maybe you're, 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 you're kind of involved in something that's like, man, this is bad leadership. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think it would be a shame that if people look inside the church and find that same kind of toxic environment, atmosphere in the church. And that's what we don't want here in Victory Outreach Fremont. We have fought tooth and nail to keep that kind of thing out of our church. We've fought our hardest to fight for the spirit of the church, a spirit of victory, a spirit, you know, uh, the culture of the church here, here in Victory Outreach Fremont, man, we. My wife and I and the leadership, we fight hard, man. We've had a long 15 years, you know. We've had some breakthrough moments, and then we've had some moments that I, man, I was like, I'm, I'm done. 
yeah, I don't even want to go to church. Could you imagine that, the pastor saying that? Like, come into church and like, I don't even want to be here. Come on, somebody. I'm just being real and transparent here today. And, uh, and those were my personal moments. And then as I look around, you know, some, at those moments, I would say, man, how did I get here? How did this happen, man? Why is this happening? But you know what? The Lord's hand was upon it all. And we evaluated ourselves. We did not blame people. We did not blame this. How many know it's easy to blame everybody for your situation? Every, everybody for your, your, whatever's happening to you. Well, we didn't blame. We simply begin to evaluate, make some adjustments, and make some shifts. And uh, that's what we're kind of doing right now in this season is we're kind of transitioning. Someone say we're transitioning into a brand new season. So um, I want people, when they think of Victory Outreach Fremont, I want them to think, man, there's some great leadership there. I could see myself there. I could see my family there. I could see my son in the home. I could see my daughter in the woman's home. I could see my young, you know, uh, uh, new gen. That we all got back here, right? They're in here taking notes right now. Just, I won't be that long, guys, I know, okay? Yeah, they, they Preaching to them, I'm more scared preaching to them than to you guys right now, I'll tell you that, man. They're like, that's a hard little crew right there. But at the same time, leadership, okay? It's leadership. I want people to look in and say, man, that's some great leadership there in Victory Outreach Fremont. See, leaders should be feeling the burden and the responsibility of leading people, of leading their families, and also leading, we heard the word earlier, disciples. What I want to point out tonight is just two quick things here this evening and then we're going to pray. One of the things I want to talk about is found in this scripture um, is they talked about the ox, the oxen uh, being able to pull the wagons and to be able to carry the weight and to be able to move the tabernacle forward. These are metaphors, if you will, um, for leadership. When you hear and read and see the word oxen in this portion of scripture that we read here, in the book of Numbers, it's talking about leadership. It's, 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 uh, the ox represents uh, strength. It represents power. It represents uh, knowing how to plow the ground. It represents being able to carry weight. It represents working hard. It represents, you know, uh, strength. And again, power. Stay with me. So during this season that Victory Outreach Fremont is in, God is giving strength to the oxen. God is giving us a supernatural strength to the leadership right now. There is no way this church could be here today, right now at this time, during this tough season, if we did not have the supernatural strength coming from God. And I'm telling you right now, God is not done leader with you. God is not done giving you the strength. He is not done giving me the strength. I thank God for God's supernatural strength that has been on me and my wife, Angelica, over the last 18, 19 months. Man, it has only been the hand of God upon our lives to be able to pull this tabernacle forward. See, I thank God for the battles, though. Woo -hoo -hoo. I thank God for the battles. My God. Woo, the battles have made me. The warfare has shaped me, and the fire has forged me. I'm going to say it again. The battle has made me, the warfare has shaped me, and the fire has forged me. My God. I thank God for the battle. I thank God for every battle that we have fought up until this point. I thank God for His supernatural strength that has been upon us. See, we have to be willing to take on this, what I like to call, I'm calling it tonight. I don't know if I'm making it up or not. But, but it sounds good. I'm, 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 I'm willing to take on this oxen anointing upon my life. This anointing to carry more. This anointing to move the tabernacle. This responsibility to carry things on our shoulders. You ain't hearing me today. This, 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 is, this is what's been upon us and this is what's coming upon us right now at this moment, guys. I don't care if you're a leader by position today. Come on, somebody. Or you're here and you're just like, I'm good. Like, I'm good with that. Come on, somebody. No, no this is for all of us. If you're listening, if you're here with me right now, it's for you. But God is going to give you a supernatural power to be able to carry this tabernacle, to carry this responsibility forward. It's called an oxen anointing. I made it up.
not plowing on your own strength, but plowing with the supernatural strength of God. Somebody please say amen. amen. I wrote down here, I hope I don't offend you. Donkeys plow on their own strength, but not oxen. Donkeys carry a lot too, but they're on their own. You don't hear a lot about them in the Bible, do you? Kind of, yeah, a little bit. Stubborn, aren't they? Stiff-necked people, aren't they? Burro, they'll kick you. Cool. Uh, we have some burros here in the house. Honey. Come on, where are you? I see you. Hee-haw. Come on, I see that nose growing. Come on, somebody. But where are the oxen? Where are the oxen? Uh, where are the oxen that say, I'll plow during this season? I'll plow. I'll take on the responsibility. Hey, I may not know a lot. I may not have a lot of experience, but I'm feeling something in my heart. I'm feeling some kind of responsibility upon my life. And yes, I've plowed before. Yes, I've plowed some fields before, but I'm ready to plow again. Come on, somebody. There is room for everybody right now to be plowing because why? It's not our own strength. It's God's strength. Come on, somebody. There's a special grace, and I keep saying that, I'm telling you right now, there is a special grace that God is giving us right now that is upon the body of Christ that God is pouring out on His leaders to lead right now. Jesus, I hope you catch that. Men in the home, you got to catch this, man. Guys, we need you to get it. Girls, we need you to get it. Guys, I need you to catch it. I caught it in the home. I caught leadership in the home. Yeah, I was there. I wasn't at first looking for God, and I wasn't, you know, this and that, and I was crazy as all the rest of you, probably crazier, I guess, you know. But one day something snapped. Someday I caught something. They put me in that staff room. That's what they did. They put me around other guys that were serious about God. They were around other guys that said, make your bed, sloppy man. Hey, no, don't, no, don't. They started checking me when I was in the home. Hey, you got to make your bed before. If you're going to sleep in here, out there in the dorm, you can do whatever you want, but in here, you're going to make your bed. Yeah, they told, they checked me like that, like a prison check, like, what's up, dude? Like, whoo, God. Yeah, they were, thank God I was yoked up with some oxen. Thank God that God put me around some people that wanted God, people that wanted to serve God. People that were serious about God. See, the reason why you ain't serious about God and the reason why you ain't serious about leading at this time is because you're yoked up with the wrong people. But there's a supernatural grace being put upon the leadership and everybody under the sound of my voice right now that God says you need to yoke yourself up. I'm feeling it now, baby. I'm feeling it now. You need to yoke yourself up with some people that are serious about God. Come on, somebody. I'm so serious, baby. Serious about God. I was serious like from day one. My God. The supernatural grace. I don't know if you feel it, but I feel it, man. This week while my wife was gone, oh, I felt, I felt. I said, oh, my God. Like, jeez. Oh, I got just the six-year-old. Oh, my God. Ooh, I'm going to pray for my mom this week. That girl, boy. Dad, curl my hair. I go, curl your hair? Like, she goes, yeah, like this. Just get it and go like this. She used her finger. I go, I can't do that, Serenity. Okay, then just put it down then. Put it down. It's like a whole thing. It's a whole vibe. She's a whole, like, wardrobe thing with her. But there was a special grace on me. Wow. Oh, there's a special grace. Come on. Five, we were fasting. Oh, my God. My neck starts locking up. I think I get COVID. My brain starts hurting. I'm like... Everything's a symptom with me. I'm like, oh my God, I think I got COVID. I think I got COVID. Like, and then I'm supposed to go to Hawaii. I got to take a COVID test. I'm never going to go. This is getting bad. It's worse. You ever talk yourself into? Like, if it was up to me, I had COVID. <laughs> my God. You have a special grace. God said, I got grace on you, man. I'm going to get you through this week. I'm going to get you through this week. I'm going to get you through. And there's a special grace upon your life and upon my life right now that God is pouring out upon the body of Christ. So what am I saying? I'm saying don't give up right now. Don't give up. Leader, don't give up. Don't you dare give in now. Don't you dare quit right now. Come on, somebody. Everybody in this room today, don't you give up, man. It's time for us to take on this oxen anointing 
It's time for us to carry the responsibility. It's time for us to take on what God has given us to take on. Come on, somebody. Leaders, we need to be modeling strength. We need to be modeling sacrifice. We need to be modeling generosity. We need to be modeling a victorious life. We need to be modeling a victorious marriage, a victorious family, a victorious career, a victory. Vic victory, victory, victory is what we need to be modeling right now. I cannot tell you how many times I've sat in that front row and I didn't have victory, but I sure acted like it. There was many times over this last year and a half where I had a smile in a camera. God bless you. Yes. Thank God for you. But inside, I was going through it. Come on, so everybody got COVID. Our whole team behind the cameras all got COVID. My wife had COVID. My, my dog probably had COVID five times. Everybody, the essential team, the worship team, everybody, just all at the same time. Two guys had it, and I said, yeah, you guys you put three masks on? We're going to pre-record some, thank God we pre-recorded some worship, and uh, you're going to stand in back of that camera, don't even get near me, come to my house, set up the camera, and when I come down the steps, stay away from me until I get in front of the camera, and then uh, just don't breathe on me. Two guys, yeah, had COVID in my house, hey, I had to do it. What are we going to do, cancel church? No. Then everybody's like, why do we cancel church? Everyone had COVID. So now, so what? No, no, no. We're having church, dude. I don't care. If I, if I catch it, I catch it. I guess that's just, I don't know what to say, but we're having church. And some of you might have caught it. I, I preached. I ran the service by myself, and I preached. Come on, somebody. Why? Because God gave me a special grace. And it's, the grace that is on me is on you too right now. So I want you to receive it. I want you to believe it. I want you to know that, 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 that what you're facing and what you're going through, God is going to give you the grace to make it. So we're modeling. Someone say we're modeling. So the first one was the oxen that stands out to me. Secondly, um, is we see, that, we see that the Bible says they were pulling. They were pulling the tabernacle. Is that they were, they, were, they were pulling the offerings. They were pulling the utensils. They were, they were pulling pulling with them. They were carrying and they were pulling. God was giving them the strength to carry extra, extra, extra. And, and not only to just hold it, but also to carry it. You see that? He's giving it to carry it. And what were they carrying? Yeah, there was things in the natural that they were carrying, but you know what they were carrying, leaders? They were carrying the presence of God. They were carrying the presence of God. So that's how important it is for us right now to don't give up. Don't quit. Get yoked up with someone that's serious about God, serious about leading, serious about serving God, and, and, and know that just like these oxen were, they were pulling. They were pulling the tabernacle. You know what they were doing? They were pulling the church forward. They were pulling the church forward. That's what we're doing here tonight. On Sunday nights, we're not here to entertain you. Ah, da, 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 da. Do 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 do. Hey, do 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 do. Hey, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to to do all that. Those days are over for Victory Outreach Fremont. We're not here to entertain you. We're not here to entertain your kids. We ain't here to entertain your sin. We're not here to entertain your compromise. We're not here to entertain your little lukewarmness. We're not here to entertain any of that. It, we're, we're this serious business with Victory Outreach Fremont. And there's no way I'm going to carry the burden of this church by myself, all by myself, carrying it forward. And I look back and no one else has a wagon. But here's, here, this is the season we are in where everybody, someone say everybody. Everybody is yoking themselves up with each other. Everyone's yoking themselves up with the presence. Everyone is yoking themselves up with the tabernacle. And we are all, someone say we are all, pulling this church together forward. Pulling it forward. Going forward. Together. Come on, somebody. So the more treasures out of darkness could come in. Come on now. I don't want to see the same faces in the next season. I do, but you know what I'm saying. Well, I'm offended. Stop it. We don't get offended no more. Like, I'm going to 
start. God is strengthening us. I'm going to say God is strengthening us so we could pull the church together. So we could pull the presence of God and pull the presence for God's people. Somebody needs to get this today. I'm almost done. Someone needs to get this today. I really hope you get this. That we're about the presence of God here in Victory Outreach Fremont. We're about the presence of God. This is the season. This is the year, the Hebrew year of habitation. This is where God is looking for a church to dwell in, not to visit and give you goosebumps. See, because we base, that's, that's, that's the old church. Ooh, did you get a goosebump? I got a goosebump. Oh, we're staying. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was, oh, man, I cried. Did you cry? I, I kind of cried. Oh, that was great. We're staying. Like, don't base it on shallow stuff like that. Don't base that. But I think the thing we need to gauge it is, are we experiencing the presence of God there? Is the presence of God in that church? Is the presence of God with the leadership? Is the presence of God in my life group? Is the presence of God at the picnic? Is the presence of God around? I really need you to catch this. Stop looking at what you see in the natural and start helping us to pull this thing so that we could all get to the other side. The Bible says that there were 12 oxen and six carts. I'm gonna end in just a few seconds here. The number 12 is the number of divine government and divine government order. So what the scripture is telling us is that when the leaders, the oxen, begin to pull the tabernacle forward with the presence of God and with the people, then, then, then that number 12, we begin to get, we begin to get organized and things in the church begin to become in order. How many know we want to have order around here? We wanna, like, this is the season where we're, this is us getting in order right now. I know to you it seems like a regular service, but this is, this is me getting our church in order. Talking to leadership, dealing with leadership, teaching this simple thing that I'm teaching here today. In a few weeks, I'm gonna be meeting with more leaders getting us ready for the next level. So we see 12 represents divine governmental order. Um, and right now God is putting things in order. The number six is the number of man, which represents man's power or man's strength. When you add 12 and 18, come on somebody. 18 in the Hebrew is, is, is the symbol for life. So these oxen were pulling the divine presence to bring divine order to his house to bring new life. So the oxen were pulling an offering, the, ox, the oxen were pulling offerings and they were also pulling praises to the house of God. Leaders get ready, come on somebody, to pull. Leaders get ready to lead the way. We have to have habitation of the Lord's presence in order for everyone else to experience it. No more visitations, but habitations. Someone say, no more visitations, but habitations. No more weekend visits. Full custody. <laughs> Some of us just want weekend visits with Christ. I just want Christ on the weekend, that's fine. Every other weekend great. No, he doesn't want weekend visits with you. He wants full custody. But here's the good news. We don't have to pull the carts on our own. God is going to put a supernatural strength, I would dare say the strength of an ox, on this church. We're called to carry a lot, guys. This church is called to carry a lot from day one. Could you imagine we started 15 years ago in my mom's living room? Just me? I think we had a life group one time, right, uh, Stephanie? We were all excited about our life group in Fremont. My mom hosted it. Stephanie, I had a message. It was just us three. We're like, we had all this spaghetti and salad. No 
one came. We're looking out, you know, you look out the window hoping. We just looked at each other and went, what do we do? Stephanie goes, well, preach. I go, really? She goes, you studied, right? Preach. And I go, oh, okay. uh, I was hoping to save it for next week, but okay, I was going to just go straight into the spaghetti right now. <laughs> no, preach it. So I, I, I sat down and I preached it. Three. Three turned into six. Six turned into twelve. Twelve turned into twenty. Twenty turned into thirty. A year later, we got the men's home. I didn't have a home director, so I ran it. I was the home director. Marissa was 11 years old at the time. She was the assistant director. <laughs> and uh, I, I, go, I got room for four guys. A month later, five guys, six guys. The living room was a dorm. Remember Jeremy? Jeremy was there with me. Before you know, we had 15 guys. Oh my God. And three dogs. Remember? We had Josie's dog. I got a dog, and Todd Dumas, a guy came in. I wanted him in the home so bad, I go, just bring the dog, come on. Yeah, he was worse than the dog. Anyway, Edwin was there, he knows. Edwin hosted many of our events, and it grew. It grew from 30 to 40 to 50. 2008, we had a breakthrough like no one got to 300 people in a matter of four years. Imagine that. From three to 300. And then it, it even grew more. It even began to add multiple services. It's been quite a journey, man. But I have never, ever seen this church in the position it's in, in the season it's in, than it is in right now. I myself never felt so confident in God, confident in what he's doing than I do right now. Because even if he didn't open up this door, it's not going to stop us. It ain't, it ain't stopped us. Because I'm trusting in his word. I'm trusting in this season. I'm tr trusting in prophecy. I'm trusting in what he's given us. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that this word is from him. I'm trusting that he's going to give us the strength to plow. He's going to give us the wisdom to go. And he's going to continue to have his hand upon our lives. Some of us have been plowing on our own strength for too long. And God is shifting and he's getting ready to put, a, put, a, put, put some favor on your life right now today. Someone say we're going somewhere. We're going to a new land. We're going to a new presence. And we're going to a new habitation. No more man's agenda. Okay? No more man's agenda in this church. No more church agenda. I know I sound like a broken record for those of you who have been around, but I'm so tired of church. Did the pastor say that? Yeah, I said that I'm tired of church. Like, tired of, what I mean is I'm tired of religion. Like, like I'm here, but my heart's over there. Uh, uh, everybody see me, everybody look at me, everybody look how, look how whole, uh, like I look on the outside. You look good on the inside, but you're a wreck on the inside. That's religion. We're done with that now, right? We shook that off. Please tell me you shook that off. Right, no more negativism. No more, no more looking down our snout at people. No more, you know, comparing yourself to this family and that family and that marriage and this marriage and that leader and this leader and that church and this church. And no, we don't get down like that no more. So no more man's agenda. No more church agenda. Come on, somebody. No more having a form of godliness but denying the power of the Holy Spirit. God is getting the attention of the church and it is up to us to usher in revival. Not, it's not the government's responsibility, but it's our responsibility. Moses was blessed with a special grace 
that was placed upon the oxen to help him carry the load and help him carry the presence of God. Notice that there was enough oxen for everybody according to their assignment. You know what that means? Is that God provided everything they need as far as strength to carry it for their own assignment. Everyone here in this room has an assignment. You have an assignment. I don't care what you think. I don't care where you're at right now. You have an assignment. I don't know what it is. You have to figure it out. You and God have to figure it out. But we're in that season right now where God is placing special grace, strength upon us, the leadership in this church, and it's even trickling over to those of you who are here tonight to say, I want that too. Maybe not leadership, but I want that on my life. I want that on my life. And if you call to be a leader, then so be it. That's, I'm not trying to recruit you tonight. I'm just trying to get you to understand something that I'm trying to get the leaders to understand. That we're nothing without His presence. We're nothing without His presence. We're nothing without His strength. Lift up your hands. is like you, Lord. 